Support comes from Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to sustainable and sound conservation of the state's forests, which support more than 41,000 Missouri jobs, resulting in a $10 billion industry. Choosewood.com. From the St. Louis Public Radio Newsroom, this is The Gateway. It's Wednesday, August 12th. I'm Wayne Pratt. Mark Twain National Forest is using goats to eat invasive plant species. It solves a problem, and it's a pretty good life for the animals. It's kind of like having a new smorgasbord on a a regular basis, and uh, yeah, I think it's pretty good. In just a few minutes, St. Louis Public Radio's Jonathan All reports on the natural, cheap, and efficient way the Forest Service is managing some of its land. St. Louis Mayor Lida Krusen is again considering tightening restrictions on city businesses because of coronavirus. She has stated that she could make a formal announcement today. St. Louis Public Radio's Sarah Fenton reports. The mayor hinted at new restrictions during a Facebook Live session earlier this week. Krusen said city officials are considering placing limits on how many people can be inside certain businesses. Late last month, St. Louis County put capacity limits in place for bars and other businesses and limited gathering sizes to 50 people or fewer. The city has so far not followed suit. Krusen said there are too many people still testing positive for the coronavirus and the city's positivity rate is still too high. Our goal is not to punish anyone, but our goal is to tamp down the spread without, hopefully, without putting anyone out of business. She says 50% of those testing positive for the virus are young people in their 20s and 30s. I'm Sarah Fenton, St. Louis Public Radio. The Missouri House is breaking up Governor Mike Parson's tough-on-crime legislation. House Speaker Elijah Haar says the package will become single-subject bills to, quote, protect the integrity of the lawmaking process. This decision comes after Parson announced he wants the attorney general's office to be involved in prosecuting crimes in St. Louis. The House was scheduled to wrap up today, but now it won't take up the individual bills until August 24th. An advocacy group that campaigned to bring cure violence to St. Louis is pulling its support from the crime reduction program. St. Louis Public Radio's Kayla Drake reports. Two members of the Coalition Against Police Crimes and Repression are resigning from the committee overseeing the Cure Violence Program. Jamala Rogers is co-chair of the Coalition. She says Mayor Lida Krusen and Public Safety Director Jimmy Edwards are ignoring the Coalition's advice and are straying from a public health approach to reducing violence. We were like clanging the bell to say, no, 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 we can't go that way. And we were totally ignored. And so after a while you think, okay, why why are we here now? Aren't we supposed to be the community voice? Cruzan's administration announced last week it will bring in 50 federal agents to fill a shortage of police officers and address violent crime. A spokesperson for Cruzan says the agents won't undercut the work of the Cure Violence Program. The five remaining members of the committee established last year will continue to advise the program's development. I'm Kayla Drake, St. Louis Public Radio. The continuing spread of coronavirus is leading St. Louis Symphony Orchestra to cancel its scheduled concerts through the end of the year. St. Louis Department of Health regulations allow large venues to reopen, but orchestra president and CEO Marie Ellen Bernard says it's still not safe. She says orchestra leaders are developing a schedule of performances that musicians will record in small chamber ensembles to be posted online. To reimagine programming in a way that we feel is safe and really honors our goal to to preserve the safety of our audience and artists on stage. She is in negotiations with the Musicians Union to reconfigure its duties while Powell Hall remains closed to the public because of the virus. The Mark Twain National Forest in Missouri's Ozarks is using herds of goats to help solve the problem of non-native plants wreaking havoc on thousands of acres. St. Louis Public Radio's Jonathan All reports it's a natural and cheap alternative to using herbicides and mowing. Dozens of Spanish goats are roaming around a field in the Mark Twain National Forest. The vegetation is about waist high, making it hard to see them from a distance. They are here to eat Cirrusisa lespidiza, a woody flowering herb native to Asia that makes this area uninhabitable for quail or turkeys. Brian Davidson is the Botany and Invasive Species Program Manager at the Mark Twain National Forest. He says the goats are helping not only with what they eat, 
but also what they leave behind. They're defecating all over that, so that, that gets incorporated in the soil, and it's a, a, a positive. So between what they eat and what they poop, they're the natural weed and feed. Yeah. What goes in comes out, right? So, um, and all of that is, it has a lot of nutrients. The fields and glades in between large groups of trees are super important to the health of a forest. They provide habitat for wildlife, areas for wildflowers to grow that help bees, and act as fuel breaks in case of a forest fire. But plants like blackberries and kudzu can invade and decimate those spaces. Davidson says non-native plants can grow up to 10 feet high. They create a, a large canopy, uh, they compete for nutrients, and then they, they push out um, and eliminate a lot of the desirable native species that we have. Davidson says getting into these areas to cut away the brush is difficult and ineffective. Using herbicides can kill native plants and is bad for the environment. And the goats are quickly eating their way through the problem in this three-acre field. It will take just a day or two to clear out the weeds, leaving behind tall grasses. This goat herd belongs to Lauren and Elizabeth Steele of Elk Creek. They contract with landowners to bring their goats, set up temporary fences to control where they go, and the goats do the rest. Elizabeth Steele says they got the idea when they were looking for ways to keep trees from coming back on their own land that they had cleared. It's a lot cheaper than running equipment over the land to get rid of those re-sprouts or using herbicides. And so we decided to use goats and then that just started the process for us of looking at what the goats eat and what they are effective on. The Steels say one of the most common misperceptions about goats is that they will eat anything. Lauren says he often hears the old stories about goats eating tin cans or the sweater right off a child at a petting zoo. But he says goats are not indiscriminate in their diets. And what makes them different is that they will eat plants that no other animal is interested in. So they're pretty picky, however, they will eat a lot of stuff, um, particularly broadleaf plants, and they're not near as much of a grass eater. They eat some grass, but uh, they concentrate on broadleaf and brushy browse type species. The Steels own about 1,500 goats and bring most of them out on jobs like this one at the Mark Twain National Forest. And while the process is very natural, this is a business. The $25,000 contract the Steels have with the Forest Service has specific benchmarks for clearing plants from certain areas. But the goats don't seem stressed by the workload. Lauren Steele says it's a pretty good life for a goat. They get shipped to a new place on a regular basis. So it's kind of like having a new smorgasbord on a, on a regular basis. And uh, so, yeah, I think it's pretty good. <laughs> Using goats to control vegetation isn't new. The practice goes back to when the animals were first domesticated. What is new is the targeted approach in using precision planning to take out specific plants in particular areas. Davidson says the next step might be to take the goats out of the open areas and see what they can do among the trees. Where we have a lot of uh, native hardwoods that are encroaching and are impeding pine regeneration and also uh, not maintaining that openness uh, with all that region we get. So we, we're using goats in there to try to maintain that structure. Davidson says he thinks forests will increase their use of goats to help maintain land because they continue to prove to be cheap, effective, and natural. In Rala, I'm Jonathan All, St. Louis Public Radio. Our Fred Ehrlich edited that report. Shula Newman is the executive editor of St. Louis Public Radio, music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt, and from the St. Louis Public Radio newsroom, this has been The Gateway. Support comes from Missouri Forest Products Association, committed to sustainable and sound conservation of the state's forests, which support more than 41,000 Missouri jobs, resulting in a $10 billion industry. Choosewood.com.